So joining me now is Bob Moran from his home studio. He's a cartoonist working with the Democracy Fund on their civil liberties initiatives there. And I wanted to have Bob on the show because as Bob and I were talking off air, there are so few skeptical cartoonists, cartoonists who are willing to speak truth to power instead of punch down at the little guy. Um, But before we get into the cultural ethos of being a cartoonist in the times of lockdown, I I thought I would um, give you a chance to introduce yourself to uh, the Rebel News universe, Bob. Um, uh, What sort of work do you do? How long have you been cartooning? Uh, And where are you working from? Sure. Um, Thanks, Sheila. I'm Bob Moran and I'm a cartoonist from the UK, uh, based in the southwest of England. I've been cartooning for national papers for just over 10 years now. Um, And I was with the Telegraph for 10 years doing political cartoons, the uh, Daily Telegraph in London. Um, I was fired from the Telegraph at the end of last year. due to, partly due to my stance on everything that's been going on. Uh, And I'm now working for the Democracy Fund in Canada, uh, producing three cartoons a week, which I make available to any publisher anywhere in the world, uh, free of charge. I think that's wonderful. Um, There's such a uh, deficit of cartoons during the time of COVID. Like I said, that speak truth to power as opposed to punch down at the little guy just wanting to live their life. What was the one thing or was there one thing that was the pandemic turning point for you? I know a lot of people can point to, you know, you're hearing a lot of fear coming out of China and then all of a sudden it clicked that maybe it wasn't as bad as what everybody says it it was going to be. What was, did you have a moment like that? And what was it for you? Um, Maybe there was a, not one moment, but I would say over the course of maybe a couple of weeks, uh, the the narrative unraveled for me in terms of, um, I, I think like a lot of people, I, I was um, skeptical, but cautious for the first few weeks, you know, this could be something real, this could be something dangerous, but um, it smells fishy, it doesn't quite add up, um, particularly because it all allegedly began in China. Uh, and I think really it, it was getting my head around the moral situation of lockdowns and of um, the way the governments were behaving and the way they were treating their electorates in, in this unprecedented way. You know, for me, I, I thought that's what's unprecedented here, not the illness, not, not the pandemic or the virus. It's the behavior of these allegedly democratic leaders. And I could see that we were headed in a really dangerous direction. but. To be honest, I, when, when I um, kind of changed my stance and began to put out cartoons, this was probably the beginning of May 2020 was when um, my output changed in that way. I fully expected that pretty much everybody in my industry would be following along with me. You know, I, I, I kind of thought, well, maybe I'm the first, but I'm sure within a few days, all the other cartoonists are going to be on the same page with this because... As you say, it's um, it should be instinctive for anyone who does my job to want to hold those in power to account and to to monitor, uh, uh, you know, when they go too far, when they get too big for their boots, when because they have a natural tendency um, to overreach, uh, uh, to seek powers that they have no right to hold, and, and these things, and that is the job of cartoonists. Um, and I'm still amazed that so many have not done that. And I can't really explain why. The, I think some musicians are having sort of the same experience as you, those people from the cultural arts, where they've got an industry built on free speech. Uh, actors, same way. You've got an industry built on free speech and free expression. And yet, yeah. more often than not, quite frankly, they've become the enforcers of acceptable speech and acceptable expression as opposed to the free expression upon which their industry is built. I find it all very odd. Yeah, and it's, to, I guess it's, um, it comes down to the pursuit of truth, you know, um, and as creative people, as artists and actors and musicians, our output is supposed to be based very much around that, um, 
you know, it's getting to the, the, the underlying truth of a situation. And I, I have always felt that in particular, the art form of cartooning and caricature has an ability to do that, you know, to peel back these layers and to try and show um, a truth that may not be immediately visible to, to an audience. And um, it's as though all of these creative people have kind of abandoned that principle and gone, we're, we're just going to accept the truth of what those in authority tell us and not question it and not delve any further. Um, it's, it's really bizarre and, and sad. You know, I, I wish it hadn't been the case, even though I've gained a, a massive audience and more notoriety because I'm one of the only people doing it. I would much rather be part of a large group, um, just another cartoonist who was trying to fight this. Because I really feel like if if all of us had taken the same line, we, we could have had a, a genuine impact, you know? That's the sad thing. You'd like to get access to my show as well as other great TV style shows too, like Ezra's Nightly, Ezra Levant Show, and David Menzies Friday Night Show, Rebel Roundup. Just go to rebelnews.com slash subscribe. That's rebelnews.com slash subscribe.